Hey everyone! So it's getting towards the end of the year, um, it's, it, it, it's getting super busy, but also it's a really great time to start thinking about priorities and talking about priorities. And that could be whether you're coming into the end of the uh, financial year, uh, for those of us that live in countries where the financial year doesn't coincide with the end of the calendar year, or it might be getting to the end of the calendar year and setting those goals and those uh I guess those rhythms, the, all those things that you're wanting to achieve, um, thinking strategically about where you want to go in the new year. Priorities is really important, right? So uh, today's framework I was going to share with you is the method by which I work with organizations to get clear on their priorities. And um, before I share that, it's, I want to share a story about how I got there. So um, this lesson was hard one. It was one of those things when I was practicing project management and I was working away on my projects. I would often have teams that were made up of people from all sorts of different skill sets um, that were also working on maybe two or three different projects at a time. And so you'd have this sort of percentage allocation um, for your team members. So you didn't have a full-time team. They weren't dedicated. They were often working on other things. And, um, and so the way that this showed up for me when I was in that sort of role was that you know, you'd, you'd have these competing priorities. And uh, you know, you'd just lose someone for a week because something's blown up on their other project and they had to disappear. And so very frustrating. And when you're, when you're working in that, at, at that level, it, you don't have control over other people's priorities. And so depending on your skill set and how uh, bullshy you are, uh, you'd have to negotiate with somebody else's project manager. And it was basically like trading horses um, to try and make sure that they work on your project, right? Like pretty standard sort of environment. Well, What's funny is like once you start to amp this up and you start to look at uh, business agility and um, more visible work practices and all those sorts of things, then uh, this problem becomes really visible. And so the way that I learned uh, that this particular framework is super, super important was uh, kind of a recurring pattern, but I'll share one story in particular because it just was just brilliant, just highlighted perfectly why we do this. So we're sitting in a meeting that we've convened with a bunch of business stakeholders. And um, we got to a point where we could see all the work that was in play for um, for this particular vendor that we were working with, this particular supplier. Uh, so we'd done the work to get to the single backlog, which is the framework that I'm gonna share with you. And we're sitting in this meeting, we're reviewing this backlog, and we'd got down to, like the list was, was enormous but we got down to just five things that were in progress. Like the business had cut it right back and it said, no, we're just going to focus on these five things. And once, as, as they're done, then we'll promote something else into the work in progress, right? So they've been doing a lot of work to try and break it down into small chunks and make sure that they had pieces of work that were independently valuable. So we're not talking prioritizing like a three-year project ahead of another one-year project. We're talking about pieces of work that would have been anywhere from, let's say, four weeks through to say three months, roughly. And how and rough, that was roughly the size that we're dealing with, right? So they put everything into a list. We're sitting there in this meeting, and there's five things in progress. We get to the end of the meeting, everybody good, cool, happy with the priorities, yep, good to go. And the supplier says to us, Well, what what about all the other things that we're doing? And uh, I, I remember thinking, this will be good. So I've been here before. And I said, oh, what else are you working on? So we got down to five things that we're working on, right? And this person says, well, what about the other 84 tickets that we've got open that we're working on for you? <laughs> and there's this moment where everybody in the room sort of, somewhere between panic and terror and like WTF, uh, and so then we spent, having got through the meeting and got really clear on our priorities, then we redid the whole meeting <laughs> and redid the whole like priority of everything, including the other 84 tickets that we were working on that weren't on the list. And um, like that story, it, it's come up for me again and again as, as I teach these techniques, but it, it it's so important when you're trying to move to a more agile work environment, when you're trying to drive responsiveness in your organization, that you've got visibility of the full picture, right? Because anytime you're making priority decisions, if you can't see those 84 tickets <laughs> that are outside what you're making decisions on, then 
you've got you have got the full context yeah and um and also if the other thing is you know if you're if you're making decisions about that work and you can't see you know you're blindsided by those other 84 tickets then that priority call between what you're prioritizing and those other 84 things that priority call is being made it's just that it's not being made in a place that it's visible where everybody's bought into it. Like that, that priority call is probably being made at the level of the people that are actually implementing things. And they're making decisions day to day about do I work on this particular piece of work or do I work on this other project? And they are probably making that priority call for you. So don't be fooled. The prioritization conversation is happening in your organization. It's just a question of whether or not you've got visibility for it. So the framework that I want to share with you is super simple. It's the first step in the prioritization conversation, and that is to build a single backlog of work. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to go out and get visibility of all of the work that's on your plate. So normally the way this rolls for me is I will ask people about um, the projects they're working on, um, the business's usual stuff that they have to do every day, you, know, you can dive into where is work come from, like who who asks you to do stuff, start diving down different stakeholders. Uh, and most importantly, we also want to consist, consider the customer demand in this. So that work that you're doing to capture your customer insights, that should be feeding into your business somewhere. So you want to go through that process of going, where are all the possible avenues that work can come to my team? And how do I how do I grab all of those all those different all those different sources and we want to pull them together into a single list. And then once you've done that, you want to take all of that work and you want to you want to get clear on priorities, right? So some stuff may be really simple to prioritize. You might be able to do a first pass where you go, these are the things that we're working on. These are our top five projects. Here's all the other stuff. Uh, that that may be a really simple task or and this is not uncommon, you're going to pull that work together and go, how do we make a decision between these 15 things? And the key here is that you want to start to bring together a group of people that can make that decision. You want to bring together all of the stakeholders that own pieces of work, all of the people that might be impacted by that work. You want to start to bring them together to have a collective conversation about what's best for business. That usually looks like, as you've gone and grabbed all your pieces of work, you want to make them visible somewhere so that you can bring the forum together. So step two in the framework is around making it visible. Now, this could be as simple as uh, a spreadsheet with a list of things. That's worked very well for me in the past, particularly when you've got remote teams. Uh, but my favorite, favorite tool is to start to use a big wall space and to create what we call a big visual anchor, where you start to picture like post-it notes with an individual piece of work written on them and you get all the post-it notes up on the wall. Uh, it can look like carnage the first time you do it, but as you start to get into visual management tools and you start to learn some tips and tricks around color coding and those sorts of things, you, you want to build that big picture of like, here's all the stuff that's going on. And if it looks chaotic the first time you do it, probably reflective of the fact that it is chaos and that's okay. So you want to get that big visual image of like, here's all the things that are on our plate. Here's all the stuff that's going on, whether it's project work, whether it's BAU stuff, whether it's stuff that's sneaking in around the corner because it's somebody's side hustle that they're just shoehorning into a team in the back corner. You want to get all of that in one place. And then the third step is you want to convene the forum. And the forum is about how do we get all of those people that are involved in those conversations of priority and those discussions and those decisions, how do we get them all in one place and then have an open, transparent conversation about everything that we've got going on, including the 84 tickets, and, and talk about like what are the clear priorities. Let's get those in order. And I think the real key here is that you don't have to order the hundreds of thousands of pieces of work that you've got top to bottom. But what you do need to do is know probably what your next top three things are, probably what your next top 10 things are. Like this will depend on the size of your team. But somewhere in that kind of three to 10 range is probably about right in terms of these are the outcomes that we're looking for. These are the pieces of work that we're trying to prioritize. This is where we want our teams to focus. 
if it's more than 10, it's a bit like KPIs, right? Like, is it really a focus area if you've got more than 10 of them? Like, can you really focus on 10 things at once? <laughs> so you start to get into that whole conversation about limiting work in progress. But what you're trying to do is get a clear picture of everything. And part of that is the, if you've got the visibility of everything, you can have stuff sitting there that's kind of in the parking lot so it's not getting forgotten but you can focus on a smaller subset. And that means that as you start to focus in on what's important, clarity of priorities comes through. People will make those decisions about, do I work on project A or project B within context of priority across the group? They'll start to make better decisions when you're not there. And it's really clear for all of your stakeholders what you're working on and what's happening and, and where it's at and why, because we can see that we've got these five things that we're working on your piece is over here, it's not started yet, or you're number one and you should be getting the, the priority that you need. And if you're not, then let's have a conversation about making sure that we free up those people because that's the number one thing we're trying to achieve. So that's it in a nutshell. The single backlog, three-step process. Step one, go and find all of the work. Step two, pull that into a single view, a single list, a single visual board of all of the work that you've got on your plate. Step three, bring everybody together into a forum to discuss what's actually the priority and get clear on what are the next top three to ten things that you're working on. The, the things that we're working on, the next couple of things that we know we want to start so the teams can keep moving, and then everything else, stress a little bit less about that because you want to keep having those conversations on an ongoing basis. The stuff will bubble to the top and you can, you can start to feed the teams through that sort of just-in-time process of as they're starting to finish, they're, they're finishing off one piece of work, they know what the next thing is they need to pick up, and you just slowly refresh that backlog in the background. That allows you to have total clarity of what's on your plate, it means you're making better decisions because you've got the full context, and it means that you're able to stay more responsive because you're not prioritizing that list of hundreds of thousands of things from top to bottom. You're just saying these are the next things, the next sort of three to four things that we want to work on after you've, you've finished the work that you're doing. And then everything else, well, we can have a conversation about that at a later date. Um, and probably the last thing I'd add to that is that, you know, that conversation needs to be regular. And in my experience, a two-week time window works really well. So I've seen teams that go more frequent. Seen to, uh, so down to like weekly kind of conversations and I've seen teams that take longer and we'll spread that out to say a monthly conversation. If you get the time frame too short, what you'll find is that things don't move and people will get really frustrated and so um, they'll stop turning up. If the time frame's too long, you'll find that people don't get enough of an opportunity to have their say and stuff will start sneaking in around the edges. Now, if you've got the time period right, you're sitting at around that two weeks mark, generally, and things aren't moving, and stuff starts coming around the side, then you know you've got a problem with the size of your work packages, and this, and you're not slicing it down into small enough pieces of value, and you want to work on breaking it down into small chunks. Um, so that's it. That's the single backlog. Super useful tool. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I, I would love you to go out and try that if you're not already. Uh, I would love to see pictures of your backlogs, like drop me a note with a photo of the wall that's got your backlog of work on it. I've got heaps in my archive that I love and I, I it's one of those nice nostalgic moments when you get to go back and go, oh, we built that wall and we saw like that, that was the picture that we built. So these, these things can come out in all sorts of different fashions. So if you've got a backlog, post me a photo of your backlog, show me what it looks like, show me like what your work in progress looks like. How many items are you working on? Have you got that work in progress under control? Are you having your forums regularly? Like, send me a photo of your board. I'd love to see it. Uh, so that's it from me this week. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Go try and implement the single backlog in your organization and post me a photo of your backlog once it's done. Have an awesome day, everybody.